Hello, Remnant. This is Dr. Michael Lake with Biblical Life Assembly, and I want to welcome you to the reboot of our video ministry. I can't begin to tell you what an honor it is that you have allowed me to come into your home, come into your uh, Bible study group, or your home fellowship. Our desire is to bring you cutting-edge information from the Word of God, what God is saying prophetically, and to take you deeper into God's Word in your walk with God. You know, this fall has been very interesting, and if you've been watching some of our videos, you get a kind of a hint of what God has been sharing. Uh, during these fall feasts, God began to share with us the king is in, his, in the field. That's a time between uh, the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement during the, the, the Ten Days of Awe. God was expressing that he was in the field, and he had come down to see what was going on in the earth and in the body of Christ. He also began to speak very distinctly that he was releasing a fresh anointing from heaven, a fresh breeze of heaven for the remnant, those that could hear his voice, those that were walking with him, so that they would be empowered to move into a new level in the body of Christ. Then when I was at our, our great Tabernacles conference down with uh, Restoration Fellowship International, uh, God began to speak through my bishop and, and it witnessed in my spirit. God was telling me some of the same things. And I began to share it with some of the prophets and apostles that were there. And they all agreed that God was releasing upon his people a year of jubilee. Not the year of Jubilee, but a year of Jubilee. And we had discovered that it's something that we have got to announce, that right now we have an open heaven, that as we begin to take inventory, God is giving us the supernatural ability to separate what is the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness, also to realize what Satan has stolen from us, that we can claim it back, as well as discovering what he has put in our lives to hold us back, those weights that so easily beset us, so that we can begin making him take it back. Now, as a part of this jubilee, uh, I begin to take both personal and ministerial inventory of my life. I wanted to make sure that I was right on uh, target with what God wanted in Biblical Life College and Seminary, in Biblical Life Publishing, and Biblical Life Assembly. And God began to speak to us in a very, very distinct way that our time of ministering with a local congregation was coming to a close, that we are now taking this to the next level, that we're going to begin moving on a national and international uh, type of ministry, and that these videos are, are no longer me preaching to a congregation. It is solely targeted to the remnant of God, wherever you are in the world, that God is placing an anointing on me, a fresh breeze from heaven, to help speak into your life, to give you what you need to take you to the next level. You know, recently uh, I was reading a report, and I shared a little bit about this uh, with our new Biblical Life Deep Waters podcast, which is a part of what we're doing with the school, uh, a Barna Group report that every month 1,700 ministers leave ministry. You know, there's another aspect to that report that we're finding that every day 3,600 people are leaving the church. Now, we could even take that and kind of break them up into, well, here are some that uh, was this really playing church. Here are some that weren't really saved. They were just social Christians. But I believe there's also a portion of that group that are the remnant that can no longer tolerate what's happening in many congregations today. They can no longer tolerate a, a lack of, of respect for the Word of God or the Spirit of God. They can no longer uh, dismiss the commandments of God, the feasts of God. They can no longer, they can no longer tolerate hyper-grace. And so they, they have become home fellowships, and they, they're, they're just simply meeting with their families. And my desire is to speak to that group, to bring deep within with, with, for, for your family, to, to be your pastor, to be a, a mentor, to help take you forward. That's our heart. That's our passion. And uh, that's what we're going to begin investing our lives into. 
Now, I'm not dismissing the many great congregations that are out there that are really sticking to the Word of God, and they're sticking to what the Spirit of God is saying. And every day we pray for those pastors and we pray for those churches, but we also need to understand that God is raising up a remnant that will no longer tolerate all the games that are going on in church today. They're not going to type. Or they're not going to tolerate uh, superficial hype. Uh, they want true biblical standards. And I believe the remnant are separating themselves to continue their walk with God in a heart, for a heart that is really after true, true publicity. Now, remnant, my heart is for you, and my vision is to see Biblical Life Assembly become your source of inspiration and instruction in, in God's Word that is balanced and that is true to what God's doing in this hour. Now, in the past few sessions, we've been dealing with a lot of things. Uh, we have been... Uh, I've been trying to uh, expand your understanding of the universe that we're in and, and what reality. How many know that, that what we're facing today, the devil has pulled the wool over our eyes. He has created some type of pseudo-spiritual matrix that we're in that we don't really see and understand what's going on. And we don't know how to flow in the things of the kingdom of God. And so I begin to deal with, uh, with sessions like being established in truth, uh, a, a paradigm uh, the a kingdom paradigm of reality, and then they, a call to uh, jubilee in the 21st century. These are some foundational things, and if you haven't discovered those, please go to our YouTube channel and sit down with your family, get paper, and uh, get your Bible out, and begin getting those foundational things into place, because I want to take us on to the next level. For us to move where we need to move, we need the Spirit of God, we need the Word of God, and our walk has all got to line up with the Word to move us out of Babylon and into the jubilee that flows from the throne of God. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Haggai chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. And this is a call of God for us to examine ourselves. And how many know that's good spiritual practice? But I think there are seasons that God calls us to examine ourselves because the enemy has snuck in somewhere, that the small foxes are spoiling the vines, that we need to, to see really what God's doing, how our, how our lives line up with that, and how to get the devil out of our, our family, out of our lives, and what God's trying to do. Starting in verse 2, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, saying, uh, uh, saying, this people say, the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for, ye, for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye are clothed, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put them in a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring down wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And ye have brought it home, and I did blow upon it. Why? Saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Now, one of the first things I want to look at is the Hebrew word here, say to consider, which is darech, which means a way, a road, a distance, a journey. It means a matter, a habit. God is calling all of us during this time of Jubilee to consider or to closely examine our way, our journey, our manner of life, our habits, and our course of life. Now you're saying right there, now this is talking about the temple of God. Let me, let me put some things forth just for your consideration. Number one, I, I believe that uh, a lot of the things that we're building today in the body of Christ that we're pouring millions of dollars into is not about building the temple of the Lord that we build programs, that we build things that are about a please, that, are, that appease the flesh, that are things that we want. We have turned God's house into our house. That we have to have a Starbucks as a part of our mega church so that we can get our coffee right there before we go in. That we need to make sure that the praise and worship is entertaining for us. 
We need to make sure that the, the pastor this simply motivates us and gives us a little nugget so that we can walk away inspired that day to make us greater, to make us uh, to make our lives easier. We have all these programs going on within church, and it's not about sharing the gospel. It's not about teaching the word. And many times it's simply to alleviate some need that we have in life to make our lives easier so that we can go and have us time and do what we want. Guys, that's not building the house of the Lord. It's not. Now, uh, I really think that the real temple of God today lays desolate and contaminated. Say, Dr. Lake, how can you say that? It's easy. The Bible is very clear. You are the temple of God. While we have been trying to build up all kinds of other things, you are what we should have been investing our time. We need to call the lost to repentance and to come into Christ. And then we need to develop programs so that they can begin lining out every single area of their lives in line with the word of God to bring healing and to bring lasting wholeness, to bring full salvation and redemption to every single part of their lives. If we don't do that, we are allowing the true house of God to lay waste. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. The apostle Paul tells those in Corinth, Know ye not that you, that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, he shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. We need to understand that God moved from a physical temple in Jerusalem to where he turned your spirit into the holy of holies. He turned your soul into the holy place, and your body is the outer court that you are the temple of the Most High God, and that as you begin to return to publicity, as you begin to become that remnant, that prays, that seeks the face of God, that adds spirituality back to your home, that begin really walk with God 24-7, 365, that your walk with God, God considers priestly service unto him and unto his kingdom. Now the word defile here in the Greek is Theo, which means to corrupt, to destroy. In the opinion of the Jews, the temple was uh, de- was corrupted or destroyed when anyone defiled or in the slightest degree damaged anything in it, or if its guardians neglected their duty. To lead away a Christian church from the state of knowledge and holiness in which it ought to abide. Listen to that again. To lead away a Christian church from the state of knowledge and holiness. How can you have holiness when you're being preached hyper grace? How can you have holiness when the very definition of holiness is found in God's commandments and we are being taught that that's all done away with, then you have done away with holiness, yet the Apostle Paul warns, if you defile the temple of God, if you cause believers to sin and to walk in sin and not to build their lives spiritually, that you are defiling the temple of God. God is calling us to a fresh season, a new time of rebuilding his temple. It is time that we concentrate on building true spirituality in our own individual lives and bringing it back into the home. When we do, things are going to change. Guys, it is no wonder that so much in our lives lies waste. We are really left with the building of the temple of God to develop things of the world and the tickling of the ears. And right now, I think God's going to judge it. I think we're going to see a a major sweep. I think God's going to begin defunding a lot of things and wake up a lot of people to what they're giving their money to if it's not really building the kingdom, if it's not really building the temple of God. God is going to begin defunding that, and he's going to begin moving it to those that are investing in his people. Now, part of starting out all of what God is doing and what the enemy is doing in our lives, we've got to examine our ways. Is it really God? Is it building something of real kingdom worth? Now, friends, in this hour, in this day, I choose to invest in you and your family. 
I mean, this was a real step of faith for us. We have no local support at all for what we're doing. It's all based upon our partners scattered across the United States and other countries. Because I believe in you that much. I want to pour the rest of my life into the remnant to see your family become stronger, to see you walk with God like you never have before, to see you hear the voice of God and know that it's God's voice without a shadow of a doubt, and for you to be able to open up this word and not only understand what is being said there, but be able to live by the power of the Holy Spirit, what God's saying. And I want to share with you a vision that I had. I always enjoy traveling to Canada uh, we have a uh, school up there that's a part of the Canadian Revival Center in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, and Apostle Kevin Tabucci is the pastor there. And Kevin is, is very, very prophetic. Uh, he is discovering his Hebraic heritage. He has been a revivalist for years. Uh, he has studied revival for over 25 years. Uh, he's run with people like R.W. Shanbach and, and many others that just love to see souls saved and to see them come and, and to begin living God's ways. And uh, I always love to, get it, to be able to go up there and to see what he's doing and to spend time with him. And Kevin is extremely prophetic. I've seen him walk up to a complete stranger and say, you're fighting this and you got cancer here and the doctors confirmed that you have this. Is that true, sir? And the guy says, yes. And he says, well, God has just told me to pray for you because he wants to heal you. How many know that's good prophetic? And whenever you get around prophetic people, it stirs the prophetic within your own heart. Iron sharpens iron. And so whenever you get some prophets together, that's why uh, in Corinthians when it talks about when someone gives a prophetic word, let the prophets judge. There's a burning in your spirit. There, there is, a, there is a, an acceleration of the prophetic within you. When a prophet hears another prophet speak, it stirs the gift on the inside of him. Well, on Saturday night during the worship, and it was a wonderful worship service, God gave me a vision and I want to share that vision with you. God lifted me up above that church, and it was at night, and the entire city of Prince Albert was dark. The only thing that you could see light coming out of were the windows and the doors of the church. But it wasn't regular light like it would, that would come from light bulbs. It, it, it had a different power and a different glow to it. And, and I began to realize that that was the glory of God and the fire of God was beginning to, was, was falling in that congregation. And you could see that it was beginning to shine out into the darkness, into the community around it. But the rest of the community was dark. And then to scattered all over the community in Prince Albert, I began to see that same fire and that same glory began to shine out of homes. And I believe what God was showing me, he was showing me the homes of the remnant. And guys, he wants his fire, he wants his glory, he wants his presence in your home. In fact, when I asked the oh Lord, Lord, how can this be? He just simply gave me one word, Obed-Edom. And Obed-Edom was the man after David uh, took back the Ark of the Covenant from the Philistines and he set it on a donkey cart, which you shouldn't do. That's a pagan way of doing things. He didn't go back into God's instruction on how the throne of God should be moved. Uzzah reached out and touched uh, the Ark of the Covenant to study it. He dropped dead. David said, huh, I'm not bringing this thing into Jerusalem until we find out what's going on here. And there was a guy named Obed-Edom. And when you dig a little deeper, he was a Levite that he knew from God's instruction. The Levites were teachers of the Torah. He knew exactly how the throne of God was to be established. And so they brought it into his home, and, and he knew how to maintain and give proper dignity to the throne of God in his home. And the word goes on to say that the blessing of God settled in on that house. All that he had, all that pertained to his household was blessed. And when David heard that, he knew that it was time to go ahead and take it in Jerusalem. And God is saying, I want my throne established in your home. I want you to be an Obed-Edom. I want to establish my throne in your home that the kingdom of God begins to rule and reign in your household. And when it does, that's going to be the fastest way to blessing for your household. 
You know, today we see preachers get up and make all these extraordinary promises that if you just write out a big enough check and send it in that all these blessings are going to come on you. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. You can't write a check big enough to overcome your disobedience. God is calling you to obedience. It is always better to obey than to sacrifice. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not against giving to ministries. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit needs to show you the amount of where to give. And when you give according to what God has put in your heart, he's always going to bless that. But I think, I think that is added on to a life of obedience that when you're doing what God wants you to do, and you're establishing his shalom, his peace in your household, that it's going to bring blessing to your household that regardless of what happens in the economy, regardless of what is happening in the world around you, the kingdom of God is established there, and your home becomes an embassy for Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Messiah himself has taken up residency there, and therefore, his kingdom begins to supply supernaturally. Healing begins to take hold, and it drives out sickness and disease. Lack begins to be driven out as, as abundance becomes very real within that household. And all your priorities change. You quit letting the world tell you who you are. You quit letting the world tell you what you have to have. And you let Almighty God show you who you are and what you need for your mission and your purpose in the earth and what you need for your family. When you begin... When you can make that transition, things will begin to change for your family. You see, I believe that the Protestant movement hasn't protested enough. The Catholic Church made everything institutional centric. That your very salvation depended upon your church membership. And that you couldn't understand the word of God. In fact, it was illegal to own the word of God. Only their priests could read it. And only their priests could tell you what you were supposed to do. And only their priests could forgive sins. How many know that's not the kingdom of God? That's not the way things should be at all. Your church that you're going to are using these videos is an instruction resource so that you can walk with God, so that you can hear God, so that you can develop your faith, so that you can walk in the ways of God, which will produce blessing in your life. It first needs to become family-centric, because if you have a church of healthy families, you're going to have a healthy church. If you have a church of messed up families, it's going to run the pastor to death and the, and the sheep are going to end up biting and trying to devour him. It doesn't work. That's why we have 1,700 pastors leaving the pastorate every month. It is not because they're being attacked from the outside. It's because they're being devoured from the inside because the way that we do church and the way that we're doing the Christian faith in America today produces carnality. It does not produce spirituality. And God is saying, I want to hit the reset button I want to have a jubilee. My body, the remnant, has got to have a jubilee. They have got to empower themselves in the kingdom of God to be able to move forward in what's coming in the earth. Now, here are some steps in the right direction. I'm just going to comment on these just a little bit because I want to take each one in the weeks to come and really break it down so that, that not only that you know that you need to do it, but how to do it. And I want to use some examples. The first one is prayer and worship at home. Evening prayer is so important. You and your, the husband and wife coming into agreement, the power of agreement is never greater than when it is between a husband and a wife. You've already been made one in the Lord. No wonder the devil fights a husband and wife really coming into agreement, that is such a powerful thing. And we'll get into why you need to do it at the evening, why it's so important biblically. We also need to uh, 
reincorporate praise and worship in our homes, we need to turn off the boob tube. We, we, we need to quit letting Hollywood put us into an entertainment mode. It's good every once in a while to be able to just chill and to relax and maybe watch something. But we don't need a constant diet of entertainment. It ends up putting you spiritually asleep. It ends, it ends up muddying the waters. It, it's, it's a distraction. It's an, an amusement. And if you look up the original word, uh, the definition of amusement, it was to do something over here to distract so that you could get something done over here. So there was a deception to it. Guys, we need to, we need to have praise and worship in our homes all the time. We, we, the Bible says that we need to, to pray without ceasing, that the praises of God should be on our lips all the time. And I look for opportunities both to hear the word and to do praise and worship. Uh, I've got an iPhone. Even in the mornings when I get on the elliptical walker, I'm either being instructed in the Word, listening to a podcast on, on how to improve the way that we do things in ministry, or I've got praise and worship on so I can actually have a praise and worship service even while I'm on the treadmill. I've got a little portable uh, Bluetooth speaker system that's, that's this is a small cylinder that I can set in the car. I can listen to praise and worship all the way to, uh, to the office. I've got about a 30-minute commute to get from where I live to here. And the same going home, I listen to praise and worship. I listen to things that are going to uh, spiritually build me up. When I have this busy work here at the office and I don't need to be concentrating and I'm not writing, I have praise and worship on. The other day, my wife and I, we had to make a trip to Springfield, and so I just simply plugged my iPhone in, into the system in our truck and listened to Don Moen, and I tell you what, we had church all the way to Springfield, and I mean anointed church to the place that tears were rolling down our faces by the time we pulled into Springfield, and I turned to my wife and I said, honey, we just had church. How much more uplifting that is. And the Bible says God is enthroned on the praises of our people. And so you're creating a throne for God everywhere you go. We're also going to begin examining the power of the Sabbath at home. We're going to discover the power of the patriarchal prayer. That communion should be taken in every home. That it's a time to teach the word. And it's also a time just to take a rest from the world. One of the things that I've begun doing on the Sabbath is when, when Ev Shabbat comes, I, now this, this, is, this is hard to believe for some people, I turn off the electronics. I'm turning off the internet. And last week, I turned off my smartphone. You don't know how much rest that provided. I thought if any emails come in for the ministry, it can wait to Sunday morning. And just took a break of all that and how much more rested that I felt God's also calling us to become kingdom conscience or conscious. Being mindful of what the Spirit is empowering you to walk today is so important. Willfully walking in the ways of God on a daily basis is going to be really what is going to become your mainstay in the days ahead. As we do the commandments, the commandments build the hedge of protection. I see so many Christians talking about praying a hedge of protection around them or even trying to plead the blood. The Word of God is very succinct about things, and I believe in pleading the blood. I believe in a lot of these things, but I think the majority of your hedge of protection is keeping the commandments of God. That's why the Bible said that he was looking to the prophet, someone to stand in the gap, to intercede, and it's twofold. God, I ask that you would protect this area. And then the prophet turns to the people of God and said, you're not keeping the ways of God in this area of your lives, and it has torn down your hedge of protection. Repent and return and do the first works again. Return and begin doing the ways of God again, and your doing puts, puts things in your hand, puts rocks in your hand to begin rebuilding the walls. It's going to be so important. And we're also going to get into practicing the presence of God. Oh, we need to move, guys, from Greco-Roman theater where Christianity is an event that you do for a couple hours a week. 
We need to get rid of that. We need to become Hebraists. We need to become Hebrews again. We need to cross over out of Babylon, and we begin to be, need to begin walking in the promised land and taking all the land that God has given us for the kingdom and establishing his rule there. And it starts first on the inside. Jesus said that the kingdom of God comes not with observation. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Get it in here first, and then it's easy to get it on the outside. Now, guys, in the weeks to come, we're going to look at all these things more fully. And what I'm wanting to do is to give you tools to do it in your life. And once again, I can't tell you just what an honor it is for me to be able to do this and to, and to speak to your family and to, and to come into your homes and to come into your fellowships. It's such a blessing. And this is a little bit different for me. It's going to take me a while to, uh, to exercise the mental muscles, if you will, uh, to do videoing without an audience or without a congregation here. But we're going to get there. Just give me just a little bit. But I know God has something in store. Now, guys, the, today it's my prayer that the Holy Spirit has adjusted your perspective just a little bit. What, what I have discovered, uh, you know, in, in the past I was looking for major paradigm shifts that were radical. And, you know, going from, uh, going from uh, doing the, the traditional seasons that have become a part of Christianity, returning to the feast, returning to the Sabbath, and returning to the commandments is pretty radical. It's radical because you simply believe what God has said and you try to find the origin of everything that we do and find out if it originated in Jerusalem or it originated in Babylon. It's so important. But what I'm discovering right now is it's just God changing our perspective, just adjusting it a little bit. If you've ever been in the military, there's something called shooting an asthmus that uh, if you're trying to go from here to there and you're on foot, you've got to line up and know exactly, be able to take your compass and, and know exactly where you're headed. Because now if you're just going, you know, just a block or two, it really doesn't matter. But how many know life is a long journey? If you start out one degree off and travel 100 miles, you're going to end up in the wrong city. You may end up in, in not even near where you're supposed to be. That one little degree extrapolated over 100 miles or 1,000 miles can put you so off course that there may be no way of getting back to where you should be. And I think what God is saying right now, he said, listen, let me hit the reset button. Let me, let me just change your perspective and change your focus so that as you do, I can lead you back to the right place. A jubilee is telling us it's not too late. A jubilee from heaven is telling us, listen, if you will allow me to adjust you, I can still bring you into your best no matter where you are in life. I'm excited about that. I also ask that and pray that the Holy Spirit gives you a new determination and anointing to build the temple of God within your life and within your family. Now let me pray for you. Father God, I just thank you for the remnant. Father, I thank you that they have a hunger, that they have a thirst for righteousness. They have a hunger and thirst for the ways of God. And, Father, I just speak over that hunger. And, Lord, I call it to increase. And, Father, I loose an anointing of a Bible student upon them. Father, I loose an anointing that the word of God would come alive in their hearts. And, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and anoint your ways in their lives like never before. Father, let it be accelerated and let it be empowered in ways that they have never experienced to establish your throne and your kingdom in their hearts and in their homes. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Now, if this has been a blessing to you, I ask that you would share this, uh, our YouTube channel with your friends, with your neighbors, uh, blog about it, Help us get the word out about what we're doing and introduce more people to our Biblical Life YouTube channel. And I also encourage you to stop by our, our website, biblicallifeassembly.org. Uh, you can download all the messages that I have done in the past and the ones I'm doing now in MP3, uh, just the audio portion of it so that you can place it on your smartphone and listen to it during the week and not necessarily be stuck in front of a television. It'll help you redeem the time. 
Until next week, may God bless you. May God's face shine upon you. May he establish your kingdom in his life. And may Almighty God fulfill his word in your life. In Jesus' name. This is partner time now at Biblical Life. And I just want to take a few moments to thank our partners and our friends. Your daily prayers for us and your monthly giving to this ministry enables us to do so much. It enables us to produce the videos, to produce the DVDs, and allows us to expand the vision of what God has called us to do. Now, if you're a part of the remnant and you have been disenfranchised from a local congregation and you're using our, our video casts uh, to feed yourself and to feed your family, and in, in essence, we have become a virtual church for you, I want you to spend some time in prayer about giving your tithe to this ministry. There is, there is a direct link in the Word of God going all the way back to Abraham when Melchizedek came and revealed to him the mystery of Messiah with the bread and the wine that he gave the tithe to where he got spiritual revelation. And then, of course, it went to the Levites that were, their duties were to train the people in the commandments of God in the Old Testament. And then it comes over to those that you, that you look to that feed your family. There, there is a spiritual dynamic involved in the tithe. And uh, if you have never studied that out, we do have a YouTube video uh, up there called The Spiritual Dynamics of the Tithe. I encourage you to watch it. Now, if you're already a part of a local congregation, your tithe belongs to your local pastor. But I would ask that you pray about maybe supporting us on a monthly basis to allow us to expand what we're doing. There's still a blessing there. Now, at Biblical Life, we're never going to promise you that uh, the seas will part or that angels will come to your house if you give. What we do promise you is what the Word of God clearly says, that as you actively fund those ministries that speak into your life, it opens up your heart and it opens up your life for greater revelation. Now, I want to end this segment with praying for you. Father, I just thank you for every partner, Father, for every member of the remnant that has ever given to this ministry. Father, I water the seeds that they have sown with prayer. And Father, I ask that it would spring forth in great revelation. Father, that they would see insights deeper from the Word of God than ever before. That you would allow them to begin functioning in the kingdom with a fresh anointing and fresh insights from your Word. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. You can go on to our church website and donate online. Or you can just simply mail in your love gift to Biblical Life Assembly at Post Office Box 588, Marshfield, Missouri, 65706. God bless.